That's a good question. Or do you put it out by yourself? That's a good question. I think about that all the time. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think that would depend if we could get our fire engines out. I would hope we could put it out ourselves, but oh, you know that's happened before at other fire stations. <laughs> but it's usually when they're gone. They go to the store and go shopping and then they leave food on the stove or something. What do you think we should do? Think we could do it ourselves, or do we have to call the other fire station? I think probably half. Probably the stove was on fire. You guys could put it up by yourself, but the stove was on fire. Probably like. I think you're right. We're pretty smart. Right. Good answer, buddy. Good plan. Yeah. We might have to have you give that plan to the to our boss. I might need to put that on paper. What do you think? Yeah. All right. All right. Are you hanging out for a bit or are you guys leaving? No, we just started. We just started. Oh, just started. Right. You, you have a, what's your name, bud? Lucas. Lucas. I'm Adam. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello, everyone. Today, we are at Monterey Park Fire Station. And a fire truck is right behind me. Look. Is this ready or not ready? Yeah, we have brownie samples and okay. then we have sweets here and lemonade for you to okay, sample. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for making up a light. I love it. Thank you. Mmm, it's good, huh? Yeah. Mm. So these are older models. The newer ones will last you 10 years. Hi. Show me your cotton candy. Hey, yeah. You like it? On the Statue of Liberty. Mmm. <laughs> Let me see your face. Mmm. Is it yummy, yummy? Yeah, I want to put out the white line. Come on, come on. 
Well, drop it right there. Good job. You're going to grab the nozzle and go all the way to the hydrant. A minute, you beat it. Good job, Lucas. Right? Yeah. Good job. You beat your record, huh? Wait, a minute and like two seconds. Wow. Good, good job. Right. Bye bye. Yeah, you beat your record. You beat it all. Good job. Yeah. I'm flying on Lucas. I am driving a fire truck. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go.
Because the pump increases the pressure. Yeah. So from the hydrant, then we it goes through the pump, and then we can increase the pressure up to 250 psi. Oh, okay. So we have the elevator. So um, is it really critical for the uh, South Putnam FD or uh, South Putnam elevator to be? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, because depending on, on the height of the building, we're going to use the fire department connection. So, okay. so uh, yeah, if those are working, absolutely. And I have never been on a fire that they didn't work. But mm -hmm. yeah, if it didn't work, it could. It, not that we wouldn't be able to put the fire out, but it would just make it a lot more work because instead we would have to pull those hoses up to whatever story, let's say it's the fourth story, right? So we would have to get it up over the side of the building mm -hmm. instead of using the internal piping, which is the fire department connection. Okay, okay. So the, the, so the fire uh, department connection is easier for you to... Yeah, it's easier that? for us because it's, it's in the building already and it's yeah. in the stairwell. So we connect on the outside and then it pressurizes that pipe and then we'll take hoses and then hook up to, you know, like let's say the fire's on the third floor, we'll hook up to the second floor in the stairwell and then take our hose up and then get it. So it's less rounded. It's a lot, it's a let, yeah, it's a lot less hose um, to get to the destination we need to in multi-story buildings. So, okay. so yeah, the fire department connection is very important. And is it true that your hose can only run for about 150 feet? No, I mean, we can, well, yeah, we, I've, I've, pumped a 10,000 foot hose lake. It was over, it was over two miles long. So yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of head loss though. It, so there is a the lot, of, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of friction loss and a lot of head pressure, yeah. but yeah, no. Um, yeah, because we, we do the design for the um, waste water treatment plant. So uh -huh. basically we got different units of sure. the treatment plant. So, sure, sure. so I think I've got uh, quite a lot of So today, who do you have with us that's going to be doing our demonstration as engineer cap story? Uh, Firefighter Fox, Firefighter Wakefield, the Reserve, Alvarez, uh, and they're going to be showing you the different techniques. So these guys are going to stabilize the car, and you're going to see those black step chunks, as we call them. Uh, and that just keeps the car from rocking, and it stabilizes it from the forward backwards. Uh, there's not an additional movement. Uh, while you're in the car. The next thing they're going to do is they're going to size up and see where the best place to remove the bars from. Maybe that's the passenger side or the driver's side.
So you just saw them break the glass. Normally when that happens, we'll try and make access to the person inside and we'll cover them up with a blanket uh, so that they don't have any glass on them. Uh, in their eyes. But for some reason, we can't we'll have them cover themselves as best as possible. So that's the first thing, we're just removing that glass so that we can get access to the metal. So what you see there is best known as the Jaws of Life. They're a spreading tool. What he's doing is he's pressing the board with the access point um, so that it can spread the floor open. If you notice, these tools do not have any hoses attached to them. You don't hear any gas motors running because they are battery-powered tools. Uh, with technology today and all the battery technology that's out there, these tools are just as powerful as any tools before, and in most cases, they're more powerful than any tools we've had in the past. So they press it down and now they're going to be removing that door from the hinge. Uh, for some of you may know what the motor group is, uh, and that's what the latching mechanism is that to. Oh. You can see that that pull makes quick work removing that door, and now they're going to completely remove the door, so they're going to attack the hinges. Obviously, we need access into the passenger space, so if we have somebody in there, we need to start IVs, start doing medical uh, attention, we can, uh, but we further want to make better access so that we have a good work on that, and for that, we're going to remove the rest of the door. You also see that we have multiple tools, so we can be working on both sides of the car simultaneously if we had multiple yeah, victims that we needed to get out. So you can see where we have doors on, it's only been a few minutes. We drive um, as a part of and all first responders across the nation. Uh, when we get called for a traffic collision like this, that we get to you, we get you extricated, the, uh, extricated out of the car, and then we also uh, get you in the hospital with a 60 minute window. So an hour from the time you guys call us, we want to have you in the hospital and it's really pretty cool. So we have to be So we have to go off. We have to that passenger space. Now we're going to give you a little bit So once we remove that next door here, um, we're going to go ahead and do a full book review. So we're basically going to make this top car a tin can. So there's a perfectly nice sign on it looks like, uh, XD there, uh, but we're going to make it a convertible. I don't think that the manufacturer was planning on this thing being a convertible, but we already did. So if you notice, the front windshield is a little bit different. Uh, the side windows, they broke uh, very easily into a lot of different pieces because it was tempered glass. Um, and it, it's designed that way for a reason. The front windshield has a wet sand in it, which is basically a plastic. Uh, and the reason for that is that if you had a front wheel collision or you had something that flew up, it's not going to break and shatter all over the year. So that's why we have to use that to cut through that plastic film uh, that's between the two layers of glass and the front wheel. Yeah. So now 
So the next thing we're going to do, you see the firefighters looking at front post, we pulled out the A post, and they're looking to make sure there's no airbag canisters in there. Because most new car technology will have as many as 16 airbags up to some of our luxury cars over 30 airbags. We don't have any the seats. They're in the side curtain post, that E post, and so we're trying to not cut through the canister because it is pressurized. Um, if you cut through it, Nothing really happens other than it's a lot of noise. Um, but it can't really go through this, so we try to stay away from that. So you see the cutter made quick work of that eight post, and we cut all the way through that. So the rear window is just like the side windows. Uh, it's covered glass and you can see how it just breaks into a bunch of pieces. So we're gonna move that out of the way so now they have access. And uh, we just go by the alphabet here. So the front post that's coming and holds the front windshield in place is your A post. And then the next one there uh, that is by the driver's seat is gonna be your B post. And then this rear post will be the C post. And so we're going to have to cut all, all of these posts in order to remove this one. If you happen to find yourself in this situation uh, and we are uh, removing the car from the analogy, uh, you're going to have a firefighter uh, with you at all times. They're going to be walking you through the process. They're going to be telling you what's going on because we understand that you have just been in a really bad car accident uh, and you're probably scared. And so we'll be talking to you the whole time, explaining you are going to hear loud talk to you, you're going to hear glass breaking, uh, and we're we'll trying to just cook it to you as best as possible and get you out of the car as quickly as possible. So you can see here on the seat post, that rear post, both firefighters will actually crush it with our spreaders and the reason we're doing that is our cutters uh, are only so big that they can cut it on so they're crushing it to make that surface area a little bit smaller so we can do it in one cut. So it's almost a convertible. If you want this model, I'm sure you can get it at a discounted price. 
If you don't need to salvage our um, shield or something, you really cheap. Thank you.